not a, a timid soul. I think you got to stand up for what you believe in. And I also think nothing's ever given to you. Nothing's ever been given to me in life. Everything I've ever gotten, I felt like I fought for. I fought my way through academia, through medical school, through all of that. And I think you have to fight for what you believe in. No one's going to just say here on a silver platter, here, why don't you be the president? I think you have to fight for what you believe in. And also you have to make sure that everybody knows uh, the truth about people. And I think there's nothing conservative about Donald Trump, and I plan on making sure 20 million people who watch tonight understand that he is a fake conservative and that he's been for big government most of his life and really continues to be big for big government, but he's Hold cloaking it. it in something to try to disguise it. Hold it just a second. Are you you're saying, and I agree with this, that you fought for everything in your entire life. Are you saying that Donald Trump didn't put up a fight to take those houses away from people so he could build buildings? He had to fight for those that <laughs> private property too. He had to go to court over it. He had to fight. Well, he's, been, he's been part of the fight. He's just been on the wrong side of the fight <laughs> his adult life. <laughs> and uh, that's really, you know, the, the issue of private property is a big one because when you think of capitalism, you think of the greatness of our country, the building blocks are our capital. And capital comes typically from having security of title to your property and then being able to borrow against it. And that's what created capitalism is that we have such great security of title. But when the government can come to a property owner and say, Donald Trump wants your house, and we're going to take it for a parking lot, you know, that's destructive to capitalism, destructive to what made us great. So, you know, if he really wants America to be great again, he's got to quit doing what he's been doing most of his life, which is supporting a big government that will come and take your property. I will tell you this, and, uh, and I want to say this in front of your face. Um, one of the things I really like about Rand Paul and what he has done is – I think in some ways we have come to the same conclusion that it is the people and our principles that made this country great. And we have just been dividing ourselves over and over and over again. And he is the first candidate that I have seen before he was a candidate that was asking, how can I reach out to other communities? How can I, you know, asking communities, black communities, I, you, you need to be a part of this conversation. Well, everyone else was still separating themselves. Rand has been actively engaged in trying to have a different kind of of conversation i want to ask you senator are we at a are we at a, are we a nation anymore where we can have those conversations without uh without dividing ourselves over and over again there's too many people on all sides of the aisle that just want to keep us divided you know, I think if we don't reach out and if we don't become a party that looks more like the rest of America, I'll often say with tattoos, without tattoos, with earrings, with ponytails, without, we've got to be a party that looks like America. And if we don't, if we become the party that says, you know, all Hispanics are rapists and drug dealers, all of a sudden, guess what? No Hispanics are going to consider Republicans as a party they want to vote for. But it's the same way with African-American vote, you name it. We have a lot to offer, and the Democrats have, have, have really done a crummy job with our cities and with unemployment. Unemployment uh, with black males in Baltimore between the age of 20 and 25 is 37%. That's greater than the Great Depression. And people are open for other ideas now. If you'll show up, and if you'll tell them, you know what, there are ways that we could rejuvenate our cities. We, there are ways we could make them thriving again. But it isn't really by dividing us and calling people names. It, it's got to be about solutions. And, you know, I've been going to those places. I mean, I've been to the south side of Chicago about a month ago. Mm -hmm. and there's very much an openness to wanting to hear what would Republicans do to help our community and to help our neighborhood be better. Do you think the Republican brand itself can survive much longer, Rand, if we don't? I mean, when, it, when I see... Almost, it's almost done for. In fact, I've suggested we should uh, rebrand completely and start saying we're the new GOP. And the faces of the new GOP would be young and black and brown and uh, rich and poor, working class. And really, we have such a great message. Everything we are about it would create prosperity yep. for those who don't have it. Um. So...